Hi everyone. As chiropractors, we are constantly advising our practice members on how to take care of themselves physically, mentally, and chemically. Are we following our own advice? I'm going to focus on physical personal care and we're going to look at four different factors in this. So firstly, our practice members are all on a schedule of care. Their appointments are pre-booked, hopefully you've all got that sorted, um, and they are in their calendar as non-negotiable commitments that they are responsible for. Are you doing the same for yourself? Uh, remember that we cannot sell or even give away that which we do not possess ourselves. It is very important for us to take care of our own chiropractic journey. So have you had someone reassess you recently? And what stage of the journey are you on? Have you achieved optimization? Are you just doing relief care? Are you doing maintenance at a point that is less than optimal? We can be very poor judges of where we are on our journey. So it is worthwhile having someone else take care of, of you that and track that progress for you okay so that's the first point you know making sure that we've got our chiropractic journey sorted out secondly maintaining physical fitness is important uh, we know that having good muscle tone makes us less prone to injury and a physical injury is not conducive with long-term practice so maintaining physical fitness does not mean that you have to have you know, zero body fat and be super muscly. It means that you are moving and using your body in ways that are different to being in practice. So our work is very, very physical, but we need different movements. Um, this allows you to unwind your body and also to decompress mentally. We feel better in many ways after exercise. So make sure this is something you focus on if you have not been. It's so easy to make excuses and, you know, we find ourselves getting tired and so we avoid exercise. However, if you are looking to improve your energy and your mental alertness, exercise will actually help you get that. It's just about taking that first step and um, making a start. So exercise, keep your body moving and fit. So thirdly, set up your practice to function well physically. Right. So this comes in a couple of ways. The first is way is actually booking people in a streamlined way so that it works with your energy. Block booking uh, long visits and having an adjusting set that allows you to minimize the number of times you have to change your energetic state. It is actually quite physically draining to be moving into different states all the time. So, you know, if you are doing an adjustment here and then a new person there and then you go out and do a few more adjustments and then you have, you know, a reassessment or a report of findings, you have to constantly shift to a different mental state. So um, it is helpful, if, you know, to look at your appointment book and see if you can lay it out a little bit differently so that you can... Uh, perhaps see more people if that is your goal if you want to see more people you have to have a an appointment book that allows you to maximize your energy and if you are looking at your um, appointment book and the shift ahead and you're looking at it and you're dreading what is ahead then perhaps you should create some change so that it feels light and fun um, that that will allow you to like I said maximize your energetic output so the next thing is it's also helpful to lay things out in um, your practice in a way that maximizes efficiently, if, sorry, efficiency. So for example, place the things that you are using regularly in easy reach. Uh, make sure you are taking care of your body when you're adjusting by altering the table height if you need to. Um, it may be easier for you to take a video of yourself and take note of how how much you are moving unnecessarily and how often you are putting your body in compromised positions because we're not always aware of what we are doing um, with our body because it feels right um, but we create motor programs that are familiar and they feel right but that doesn't mean they are actually good for us so if you um, video yourself in practice and you can see you're hunched over a lot of the time and you're compromising your body by putting yourself in the you know, poor posture then Perhaps you should look at, well, what can I do? Do I need to raise my table height? Do I need to use a step? Do I need to, um, you know, create a different workstation where I'm putting my notes in if you're, you know, computerized or if you're handwriting, right? Then you might need to look at, well, okay, I'm using an activator or a blocks or some form of an adjusting instrument um, quite regularly with each person, but I've got it placed so far away from me that I'm having to 
constantly move over there to to get it and then come back. This is all energy expenditure. Now, um, if you're trying to increase the number of people you're seeing, then perhaps you need to minimize that energy expenditure and you'll probably also um, give buy yourself a whole lot of time, which will add up to maybe another 10 people in a shift, right? So the the practice function, that's that that's that point number three. Lastly, personal appearance. So it is important to make sure you look professional, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to wear a three-piece suit and shiny shoes, right? I'm frequently barefoot in practice, um, and that works for me because that expresses me and the teachings that I deliver in practice. Finding your ideal physical appearance may be a journey in itself, and, and as it is for many of us. Um, it was for me. So um, find yourself and express yourself through your appearance. You might like wearing a branded polo shirt and pants because that is comfortable for you to work in. I did that for a while and I found that um, I was working with a lot of male chiropractors. The energy was very masculine in the practice and I felt like my feminine energy was dwindling a little bit. And that is kind of one of my superpowers, my ability to connect. Um, a lot of that comes from my feminine side. So um, because I wasn't finding I was able to express that side of myself, I ditched the polo shirts and the pants and I started wearing dresses and skirts. Um, now they flow with my flow, uh, they are easy to move in and they allowed me to tap further into my feminine. Now I do realize that this is just a physical representation of my mental state, but I needed it at that point in time to help move myself to a different space, right? So Take a note of how you feel in practice. Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel presentable? Do you look attractive? Uh, people will be drawn to you when you feel confident and beautiful. So there you go, everyone. That is my advice on taking care of your personal physical um, state. So looking at making sure you are getting yourself checked regularly by a chiropractor who is keeping you on track making sure that you're exercising and moving your body in healthy ways outside of practice, setting up your practice physically, um, as in the location and your appointment book to allow you to maximize your energy and output, and also taking care of your physical, personal appearance, because when you're feeling good about yourself, you're working at your best possible level. Thank you.